Tony, just what was the thought process of going to Burns there after being? Well, I mean, I rode on an index card and it never works out this way. Um, um, Beam four, Burns four, and then Todd Helton Jr. down there for one. And uh, fortunately our guys, you know, their guys battled incredibly. We can talk about that, but um, we kind of separated a little bit there. So we went to a different lefty, but he threw about as good as anybody can throw. But as far as going to Burns in that particular situation, I mean, Beams, you could argue who's been the best guy all year long, but it's pointless because we're in the here and now. But as far as strikeout options, I mean, obviously Burns is a guy who, uh, you know, is probably more off to strike somebody out than someone else. We had a runner at third base. So all along, uh, both those guys needed to throw while we're here. They threw. And um, I think at the same time, we didn't gas anybody out uh, for what we got going on next weekend. How do you assess Dave's performance tonight? And what do you kind of foresee his role being in the postseason? Yeah, I thought Bean's performance was awesome. In, in my opinion, the best thing that we did tonight was come out and kind of keep them under wraps for the first couple innings. I mean, when you get in that mode where you're just kind of playing ball, it's when you can really play your best as a position guy, and that's what they were doing. And uh, and on top of that, they got a lot of talent in the lineup. Now, some of it was, you know, kind of took a hit because of some injuries. But for him to take control of the game and keep some zeros on the board to start was massive. And obviously, we would like to separate ourselves earlier. But like I said, it, it's a talented team on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I, I think anytime something doesn't go your way, um, especially if you're a little tight, you know, you, you kind of got some angst about you and you, and you want to get back to it or you want things to go your way. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is, like I said, we could talk about them. Th those guys played their way into a regional. And, and I think they've got the talent of some other teams in our league, and including ours. If you're just going guy for guy with the stuff they have on the mound and then in the lineup when it's fully healthy, it's as talented of a lineup as it is out there. It's just things get quirky going on during the season and they have their best ball at the very end, which is supposed to be the most valuable. So I don't think it's so much about getting back at somebody. There's maybe a little bit of that. It's just beating a really good team that's playing at their best right now. What's the chance you play tomorrow? Joyce or Sewell, I assume, like it's the start? You, you know, um, we, ha we haven't talked about it, so I'm going to keep composure and not give you a wrong answer. But, but honestly, other than a couple uh, comments thrown out when we met earlier today on pitching, it was just who the options are. And you, you named a couple of them, maybe maybe one other in there. But we, we need some guys to pitch. I mean, it's a big game, but they're, they're going to be in the same deal here. You can kind of piece it together, and there's some value to tomorrow on top of there's a trophy involved. Tony, getting Dickey back out there, I know that just how hard has he had to work to get back and then the reaction when he acts like he never left and just dumps one of them no, there. No, I've had to – He's it's so bad I've had to work hard. I had to go to cryo uh, – he wanted to do the cryotherapy stuff while we were here, and I don't know if you've done that, but it's pretty cold. Um, actually, I was going it to – It ain't fun. I was – yeah, you could lose something in there if, yeah. if you're not careful. Yeah. So it's not but – it, but it's not that. It's what, so <laughs> – but anyway, uh, you can cut that out of the whole deal. The bottom line is he's tried everything, done everything, and uh, you could see how excited the team was just to see him up, and the at-bat was just kind of icing on the cake. It relaxed our hitters, and they were able to do what they did. I mean, he took ownership of the game, and that's why he was he was killing me over there. We were going to Wyatt, and he wanted to go back out there in the ninth, which it just was a really long sit. Obviously, he was throwing the ball well, but maybe that means 12 or 15 more pitches out of him next weekend. Uh, but the bottom line is he made sure we were in a good spot at the beginning, and then he took ownership of the game. He really did. What was the difference between offense in the first seven innings and then the last two? Yeah, their guys are really good. There's a breaking point. I mean, again, their their hitters get a little bit of credit, but to me, the way their pitchers grinded and filled some innings in is what should get them in a regional. So the guys they were using were doing the same thing that the other guys they've been using, just filling the gap. And then it just kind of ran out for them uh, towards the end. A little bit of that is credit to our guys. Uh, a little bit of it is also just kind of the facts. How big was that for Cortland, that double? I know it's the numbers, I don't know what the, the contact rates are, but his numbers have dipped a little bit recently, but he's had a big week, it seems like. This yeah, week. but I mean, he sits in that spot for a reason. He's our defensive leader, and kind of like Pav was last year, but he's equally as dangerous as the other guys in our lineup. The numbers throughout the year have said that. It's just you kind of go through ebbs and flows, and um, I mean, he hit, well, Burke hit the longest one, but um, 
you know, he hit that one out of sight the other day and then a big hit there. And the other thing about him, comparing him to Pav, which will probably make him laugh if he hears this, is you always get a competitive at bat. So while the production may not be there, he fills a spot in there that is a huge part of our offense. And if you give him enough reps, he's going to do some damage. Two more, Coach. Would you guys, would you guys be able to just get into a winner go home game? What did you see here? How did you see your team prepare? Yeah, we talked about it out there. And I think uh, when we played Auburn and then a little bit of Alabama too, when you go one-to-one -one in the Sunday in this league, it's kind of a similar feel. But this one actually had the label elimination game to it, which is good for our guys to experience. And I think – it wasn't anything we said. Because we got good leaders, the label's there. It ain't going nowhere. But it doesn't mean you have to attach a bunch of different things to the game. You just go out and play. So I thought our guys were loose. I thought there was good at-bats. There wasn't a lot of crazy talk or anything like that. I mentioned that to the ESPN folks. So while there's different labels to each game, now that we've been through all of them, it's even more uh, evidence that you just got to go play baseball. I saw a Todd Helton type swing. There's no Redmond Walsh or Evan Russell comparisons to, uh, although I owe a lot of different things to those two guys, maybe some finances, but uh, not not <laughs> handing it out to them illegally. But that was a Todd Helton esque swing and just a monstrous homer. But the guy's dangerous. He can do that at any point. We talked about it before the game to him. Like people now know who he is and they're going to pitch accordingly. Um, so as long as he swings and pitches in the zone, it's a lot, a lot of fun.